So welcome to everybody. Thank you very much for coming. I'm sure that we'll learn a lot this evening. My name is Chris Mann. I work for Granite Rock in Watsonville, and I'm also the 2012 chair of the Santa Cruz County Business Council. Um, and a special thank you now to our volunteer moderators, Brian King, president of Cabrillo College and member of the Business Council and chairman-elect of the Chamber Board of Directors. This is Brian here on the candidate's right. And then Jess Brown, Executive Director of the Santa Cruz County Farm Bureau and the current Chairman of the Chamber Board of Directors in the middle. And I will now turn it over to you gentlemen. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we will start again. There are three questions for each candidate, um, all the same questions, and you have two minutes uh, to answer the question. So the first question, and we'll start, Gary, with you, and then we'll go down the line. Um, what should the role of a county supervisor be in supporting business and job growth? Best scene one, is this working for everybody? Um, I think it's to uh, streamline the regulations and get out of the way. On April 10th, for instance, uh, there was a law passed. This looks like the Enabling Act. It's 62 pages of systems and procedures that invites stakeholders. It uh, takes power away from the various uh, county supervisors. Uh, up all kinds of uh, harassment for all kinds of businesses. Um, in every place, in every form, the county is making it harder for business. Uh, they passed another law just recently in which people that help their neighbors, if they, uh, they bring the groceries, they, they take the bedpan out, uh, these people for, for a neighbor or a friend or a relative, they're requiring, they're asking to require licensing for these people. Um, in addition to that, we've got the uh, Santa Cruz Board of Realtors working with California Forward to uh, exempt themselves from a 4% service tax that's going to affect everybody in this county that, that's a barber, or, you know, that mows lawns, or any of that type of stuff. But the Real Estate Association uh, is connected with uh, California Forward. They're going to get rid of half of Proposition 13, so the taxes going up on the smaller businesses, are, they're going to get a whammed at. And then in addition, all those people uh, are going to be added a 4% tax on top of the sales tax that the rest of us are getting. This is anti-free enterprise and it's anti-commerce and I would be the one in five voting against what this political machine has been voting for uh, year after year, endorsed by the Real Estate Association, by the Santa Cruz Sentinel, and they endorse each other. You'll see, look on the back of their brochures, and these are all the same ones that are receiving the pensions, patting each other else on the back. Um, if you want to find out, uh, you'll find more information on my website. It's Man Against the Machine, and you'll get more information there than you will in uh, six months of reading the Santa Cruz Sentinel. Uh, which is owned partly by Bank of America and the Bill Gates Foundation. Uh, good evening. Uh, I want to thank the Chamber and the Business Council for holding tonight's forum um, and uh, putting us through our paces with their 23-page questionnaire. Uh, I hope everybody gets a chance to read all those questions. Um, county supervisors uh, don't really create a lot of jobs. Uh, in, the, in the end, our job should be thinking about good planning for our county, uh, trying to remove the hurdles that exist uh, for businesses, um, balancing the interest between the residential uh, neighborhoods and our commercial sectors, uh, invest appropriately in, in infrastructure uh, so, uh, uh, so uh, businesses don't need to work about, uh, worry about that, and as well as seek input on various pieces of legislation or policy. As a supervisor, uh, I've tried to do all those things. We tried to create a financing district that would bring in $60 million of funds to help do energy efficiency improvements. It's passed unanimously by the board, uh, but Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac decided that we shouldn't be able to allow uh, those kind of improvements, so we're looking for new ways to do it. Uh, when we recently did a major policy reform around non-conforming structures, which would help the business community for those that are in non-conforming structures, we went out and we, and we surveyed and did focus group with business owners, environmentalists, neighborhood associations uh, to get input and we passed something at the board that made sense and, and was a major structural change. 
Um, we are working hard to invest in the infrastructure in the county and make sure that our major arterials are something that people can get around on. And uh, we've seen that in the 25 years of the County Redevelopment Agency, that it fulfilled its mandate of improving a community that was in desperate need of services as it, as it became urbanized. But we also saw that that investment paid off because it had the fastest growing property tax value uh, increase of any place in the county. Uh, so uh, these are things I think uh, county government can do and some that we're doing well and, and it's something we always need to strive for. Thanks for having me here tonight. Um, nice, thank you for having us again. Um, my name is Charles Paulden. Um, my sense as a supervisor is as I've worked for uh, many years trying to work with, this, with the county and the supervisors to create a good place to live, somebody who's worked 40 years in the private sector. Um, I think the supervisors need to facilitate local jobs for local people to build our local economy that builds the taxes um, upon which our county government depends for much of its budget by providing opportunities for growth that preserves our brand as an arts, education, eco, and agritourism location we can build the background of our economy. These are the foundations of our economy. By providing opportunities for mixed use infill along our transportation corridors, as I've been proposing for years around the Dominican Hospital 41st Quadrant, along the freeway and Soquel Drive, um, we can uh, have opportunities to reinforce our image as a good place to live, do business, and for people to come visit a model for the rest of the world. Rather than trying to race to the bottom as a less desirable, cheap place to do business, we can move to the higher value choice that provides true value rather than poor quality, a place where people want to be visit rather than just a cut rate option. So by working together, local people, local businesses, preserving the best of what we are, we can all thrive together. And so we also have a tax base that stays within the community, the multiplier effect 10 times by doing local business with local people. So by providing these services, facilitating these services, working with local people, helping them streamline, and not just sell ourselves out to somebody who's gonna take all our money offshore, I think we can all thrive together and be in a place we wanna live. Thank you. Well, I wanna thank the Chamber for putting on this event tonight. Um, I'm. Daniel Beckett, as you all see, running for the second. Um, anyway, my, uh, my view on this is uh, government really isn't here to help business, nor is it here to hinder business. Um, there's a lot of potential business owners who would like to do business in this county who've been discouraged because of all the regulations and all the problems they have to go through. I think a good example would be this plastic bag ban. I was talking to a business owner in the county and when he got the letter from the county talking about the plastic bag ban, they mentioned that in order to make sure there's compliance, there would be so-called secret shoppers going around to the different stores, making sure that the business owners were in compliance. Now, this sounds a little bit like the Gestapo to me. I mean, small business has enough problems, you know, without having to worry about this problem. And the first uh, uh, fine, I believe it was $100, and it went up from there. So it's just, I don't, I don't, people in business really don't want to do business here because it's so difficult. And so again, I, I feel the role of business is not, not really to help business, but to not hinder them. So that's my view on it. Evening. Um, I'm Rich McKinnis. I'm running for the second district. I believe the role of the county supervisor should be that of an advocate to businesses in the county by minimizing or our county government's role in over-regulating and over-taxing our small businesses. Unfortunately, this wasn't the experience I had with my county supervisor when I bought the Seabreeze back in 2005. Um, I spent a year restoring the building. I was ready to reopen the business when the county stopped the ABC, that's the alcohol beverage control, from uh, issuing my liquor license and informed me that I had no right to use the building. They th the county threatened to red tag the building if I opened a business or even lived upstairs, even though I bought the building from the county via probate and they never disclosed this county ordinance to me. Now I should mention that I, before buying the Seabreeze, my realtor and I met with all the county departments 
and my supervisor in person to make sure there were no surprises down the road. I then, after this issue came to light, I then met again with my county supervisor for the second district and the planning department in person and was told I needed to go through a level five permit process to get the right to use back. I was told the process would take three months. It actually took 10 months and cost me $177,000 while the last pre-recession summer of 2007 passed. On Labor Day 2007, after summer was over and the beaches were empty, I was allowed to open with no money left to buy inventory, hire employees, or advertise. This revenue trap caused me to file bankruptcy to stop foreclosure while I worked on a loan mod. I was then cited by the fire marshal and decided to run for supervisor when I got sued by the planning department a second time about a month before the deadline to file. Fortunately for me, the, the judge agreed with my testimony and the facts and, and issued the judgment in my favor on April 20th. This is not how I will treat small businesses or persons who invest $2 million in our county by buying a blighted property with their own money and then restore it and reopen it to the county. Thank you. Well, good evening. My name is Zach Friend. I'm uh, running for a second district county supervisor. I'd like to uh, thank the chamber, also the business council, and all of you for being here tonight. It, you know, I really think that the most important thing that a supervisor can do is really just change the tone and the climate by which we have economic development within the county. And I think that you can do that through three ways. The first thing is, is through infrastructure improvements. And infrastructure means different things, but quite frankly, infrastructure is the backbone of what economic development is. The roads, the highway, and moving forward, actually a high-speed data network within our county. I mean, if you think about 150 years ago, we started the railway system. In the 1950s, we built the interstate highway system. And now we're moving toward a situation where you're going to need to have broadband access for future business moving forward. The second thing is just the tone. I, I think a lot of what we hear is, is that there's sort of a, a negative tone, an anti-business feeling uh, within local government and within the county. And I think that that's something that that needs to change just from the supervisorial level as opposed to you need to we need to recognize that economic development is what pays for the services that we use it pays for public safety it pays for parks it pays for health and human services so you need to have uh, to change the, the overall tone the last thing is is i really believe that the county has been guilty of an either or mentality in a lot of things meaning uh, you can either have economic development or you can have environmental protections or you can either widen the highway or take care of local roads. And the reality of the situation is you need a balanced approach to a number of these things. That we live here for a very specific reason. We're very fortunate to live here for the, the natural environment that we have. We also need to respect that how do you maintain that? You maintain that by being able to provide services that come through economic development. And economic development comes from small businesses that share the values and vision of a number of us in the county. Thank you. My name is An Antonio Rivas, and I'm running for uh, Second District County Supervisor. First, also, I would like to thank the Chamber for holding this uh, forum. One of the things that is very important, like everybody, is to be able to have a sustainable, really sustainable economic development within our county. Something, th something that we have done in, you know, in the city of Watsonville is to, to make sure that we take care of the, of the business. One of the things that we have done in, in the city of Watsonville is that we walk through the business and we owe it to make sure what do they need, what do they want, what they need support. So we'd be able to streamline some of the regulations and hurdles that the business you know, need. Another thing that's very important is to really to provide a tax, a sustainable tax base and provide incentives, not only for the business community, but also for the act community, which is one of the uh, biggest thing in the second district, you know, especially the berry, uh, the berry farm. Uh, the berry is one of the strongest uh, economic development within, within our city. And so we have to continue that. The other one is the airport. We need to continue to provide and support the airport because they bring a lot of business. At the same time, we have business within, within the airport. Uh, it's very important for us to, to continue to, to provide this infrastructure. I think that we need to, uh, to look at the infrastructure of the county so we can be able to provide better uh, ways in, and to support our business. One of the things that we probably would like to do is to, is to, is to call for an economic development summit in which we can include not only the county but, but the, the cities and the local government so we can be able to, uh, to come up with a plan that is be able to support the business community. And that's very important to do um, because we haven't done that here in the county. I think the county can be the leader to do that summit. 
The other important thing is to, uh, to include the educational uh, institutions because they provide a lot of training and a lot of support for the jobs that we're going to provide in the future. And that's, you know, and that's something that we need to do, the, the institutions, the educational institutions to do that. Thank you. My name is Eric Hammer. I'd like to thank the Chamber for having this event tonight. Um, I look at the role of a supervisor as a bridge builder, somebody who brings everybody to the table to discuss economic development, to discuss uh, local business, whether it be small or large, and the direction in which we want to head. And if we put it into business terms, you have to start with the business plan. And we call that in government, you know, a general plan. In business, we take a look at that as a strategic plan. We need to set some goals, and we need to set some short-term and medium-term goals, and we need all the stakeholders at the table. And I see the supervisor being a person that can help bring those stakeholders to the table. We're lucky here in Santa Cruz County. We have some extremely smart business people that are multi-generational. We have agriculture. We have education. We have tourism. We have small business. We had more large business. We've lost some of it. We've had tech business. We need to pull our resources together. Some call it a summit. I think I'd call it, you know, a brainstorming session. And I also think that we need to bring our young college leaders and our entrepreneurs to the table and discuss what is Santa Cruz going to look like? What's going to work here? And I think as a supervisor, it's important to listen and to moderate the discussion that's put forth. And then to help with the action plan that is put together by the professionals, whether it be to set policy to make it happen, if, it's, if, it's, if we're taking a look at transportation being the issue, or uh, the need for uh, services, we need to get that information from the business community and then set policy again to make that happen. Thank you. Hello, I'm Bruce McPherson, candidate for the 5th District Supervisor, and welcome to the Museum of Art and History. It kind of feels like a second home. <laughs> but uh, I want to thank the Business Council and the Chamber of Commerce for having this uh, forum, the, what, third and three days, and we've got one more coming tomorrow. But uh, I, um, as a supervisor, we need to change our attitude. <clears throat> Santa Cruz County government is the only one in the region that does not have a strategy or personnel dedicated to creating jobs. And it needs to get there, and it needs to work with the business councils. It needs to work with the chambers of commerce to make that happen. And I'm not just saying that because you're sponsoring this, this forum tonight. That's a fact. We aren't doing that, and we're not building on the assets we have, and that's what we really need to do more than ever. We've got to protect our ag agricultural land as a supervisor. Our land use decisions are key. That is probably the most singular important thing that we do as a county supervisor. But to draw good businesses here, we need to have some kind of a, an openness and, and cooper, cooperation with the business community to let business uh, owners, let uh, those who would love to be employed here, know what's available to, to, uh, to build a business here. And we have some resources that are, are unmatched. We, we are the, right over the hill from the, the technology center of the world. We have the premier agricultural lands in the nation. And we have an education community here that's just absolutely outstanding. And to draw the, the people here to move businesses to this county, we are going to have to assure them that we have adequate public safety to provide uh, just public safety for our citizens. We're going to have to show them that we have a transportation network that isn't, uh, a, you know, doesn't stop traffic instead of making it move on occasion, and that we have a premier excellent education system and we want to improve on it. So we have to work with education, business, and, and, uh, the, um, and just the medical community as well throughout this, this uh, county. I appreciate uh, your coming tonight. Thank you. Hello, I'm Bill Smallman, and I have to say that it's been difficult being kind of an outsider for public sector trying to run for office and um, basically I got interviewed by the Sentinel and they said, you know, basically it's a lot of candidates that didn't have any experience, name recognition or endorsements or money, you know, we don't care if you're the Einstein of uh, supervisors, we're not going to listen to your ideas basically. So I said, please listen to my ideas. 
And so a lot of my campaign is in this subject. I wanted to recreate a, a Board of Economic Development, and I got the idea from Sonoma County. And um, I actually felt that, you know, government is severely lacking from people that with business experience. And um, so basically the whole the entire board would consider, consist of, you know, a diverse crowd of business professionals. And also I decided that I believe that it should also include two sup acting supervisors. Um, I, and basically if I do make the runoff, I will meet, try to meet with uh, County of Sonoma uh, supervisors to find out how the resolutions that created this board and to, to, and make one um, specifically for Santa Cruz County. Um, and um, so anyway, I, I really believe this this board would be helpful for businesses, especially Mr. McGinnis's business. Uh, you know, I want to hear more about that to to, to um, also to help business grow. With you know. I don't want to talk more about that, but also also to increase, the county has a big involvement with vocational training. I have a friend that owns a winery, and he actually said that there's a culinary, culinary school at Cabrillo College that does this wonderful event every year, and they're actually going to get cut. And I, you know, um, So I think the county has involvement with education, so I think it could very helpful support with vocational training in school and, and around the county, and also be a research team. Uh, okay. Bell also signals it's time for the second question, and uh, each candidate will have an opportunity to answer up to two minutes to the second question. And here it is. What are three things you will do to address the county's projected budget deficit, and might these include increased tax and or fee revenues? I think it'd be fine to work from east to west now. Um, no, my campaign um, is anti-tax and pro-economic uh, development. Um, there, you know, there might be some situation, you know, but after not after a real hard study, you know. I'm definitely in, in favor of um, in trying to promote economic development to increase revenue and also look to the state for any type of help in that regard. And basically that's it. Thank you. Uh, one thing that I think we should look at has been discussed recently is um, an increase in the vehicle license fee. Um, I am not totally against increases but you have to look at a situation and what the facts are before you we have an abominable road situation in this county and is just terrible up in the san lorenzo valley we're not going to address this and get to it with these six 600 miles of roadway in the county immediately when it's there's hundreds of millions of dollars worth of need the county service area tax the road repair tax it's on the the un in their unincorporated tax rule, the, the, the tax rule of un uh, people living in the unincorporated area of $56.40 a, a year, provides less than about $3 million. Um, we have hundreds of millions of dollars of need, and if we wait longer, it's going to get worse. Now, if we increase a vehicle license fee, to, uh, uh, fee by $10, that's going to provide with 230,000 vehicles in this county about $2.3 million. So it's not going to get us there uh, in a hurry. But we need to start somewhere. And I think this is one of the fallacies or the shortcomings that we've had in this county uh, addressing our infrastructure needs overall. And I think we need to take a, quicker, uh, a better look at that and how to resolve it. It's not going to come free. And I, don't, I can't tell you where I would take it away from another piece of the budget because everything's been cut substantially over the last few years. Also, I think this... Uh, not an economic development department, but we need to get something so people can come to this county and say, this is what's available and this is where I can work. And also we need to co uh, coordinate our activities with the education systems that we have here. The research facilities that we have at UCSC are phenomenal and what Cabrillo College offers us is terrific. We ought to work closer with our education community to see what the needs are for our, our county.
I think one of the first things that I would take a look at doing is looking out to what other counties are doing. Uh, we're not the only county that is having budgetary problems right now and has been making cuts. I think that we need to take an approach that reaches out and finds counties like ours that and, and look at what type of ingenuity that they've done to be able to work through budgets. What, you know, it's not reinventing the wheel. I mean, it's bringing more people to the table. I'm not saying this isn't being done uh, presently. In fact, Santa Cruz County, I believe, uh, is known throughout the state of, of having innovative ideas. But still, I think we need to look at what, what, what's already being done. Uh, the road structure that was just talked about, the infrastructure, is a huge issue. And I know that the um, RTC is taking a look at and has done some studies to see if a $10 uh, tax would be acceptable to the community, a two-thirds vote. And right now it's looking to, depending upon how it's written, anywhere from 57 to 67 percent, you know, approval rating. Uh, we, John Presley has also talked about a half-cent sales tax to help with roads. Um, I think we need to really look more at a critical thinking approach, bringing people together, uh, talking about solutions, uh, and then making a game plan and following those. Thank you. One of the things that after the state has um, took all the money for redevelopment agencies, I think you know a lot of the cities have um, not able to to get any more other projects. But I think you know one of the things that is very important when I was in the Transportation Commission, I think we, we talk about uh, uh, having the, a a tax initiative to be able to, you know, to maintain the streets, the roads, and, and different uh, areas, the sidewalks, the area. So now they're going into the process. I know they did a study, like you say, uh, to get a $10 BRF um, tax in, in increase for, so we can be able to provide those services. I think it's something that we can look into it as a county. And I know as the county, uh, as the redevelopment agency has um, cut through all the cities, I think the county will be taking the leadership of, of an agency that will be able to talk about how those monies will come back to from the state, hopefully. The other thing that's very important to do is that, um, you know, I think, you know, like Pajaro Valley Unified School District is thinking about a bond issue, something that we can support education. I hope cover you probably college will probably will need to do another uh, bond issues to be able to support a lot of the a lot of the programs that they have now because they have a lot of big cuts now and I think the students, uh, the increase of the fees of students is beginning to become very a problem as well as the UC system and the state system. So I think it is important that we can look at the local level. What can we do to be able to provide those and to support ourselves? And I think we have to look into, into taxes. What taxes that our communities are willing to pay and willing to support? It's something that we have to look into. As a county supervisor, we have to gather everybody, the business community, the education community, and the business community, so we can be able to see, okay, what can we support? And the community can support. And that's what we'll do. I will do as a county supervisor. Well, what three things would I do uh, to address the deficit? Well, I mean, the, the number one thing is obviously you need economic development. There's no question at all about that. And, and I think the three things that you could do to do that, the first thing is you need to, to better leverage, leverage private and public partnerships. With the city of Santa Cruz, I worked very closely to bring Code for America into the city, which is going to streamline the uh, business permitting process, which is something, if you go down to the county right now trying to open up a business, it's nearly impossible. And one of the things that the city of Santa Cruz is working to do through this Code for America partnership is to make it online, make it transparent, and make it easy to do. The second thing is in our investments in infrastructure, as I had mentioned earlier, that it really is the backbone for economic development, be it through data networks, be it through roads, be it through the highway. And the third thing is, is an investment in human capital. We have over 20,000 people a day, 20,000 people a day that take the trip over Highway 17 to work out of town. And they work in San Jose, they work at Apple, they work at Cisco. They're spending a lot of their money over there, a lot of their time over there. They're not engaged in the PTAs. They're not coming to meetings like this. They're not coming to city councils or board of supervisors meetings. There's a lot of money that could be spent here that isn't spent here because we don't have the economic development here that brings the jobs here that keeps the money here. I think that that is the first step. Before you look for outside fee sources or tax sor sources, you actually look internally first. Are we doing everything that we can internally to create a business environment that raises revenue before you look toward the outside services? 
Thanks. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm very confident that I would not vote for any fee increases on businesses since I believe that the county has already extracted too much uh, money from me with very little or no return. Um, instead, I, I would take the approach that a rising tide raises all boats. And instead of placing the burden of a bloated government payroll on the backs of our business owners, I, I would force the government, the county government, to fix its budget problems internally, um, just as small in business owners like me were forced to do. And I would also find ways to increase the sales tax revenue um, collected by our businesses by helping them to be more successful so they hire more employees and those employees spend their income and further drive our local economy. I personally wasn't able to hire any employees because of the situation I was put in by the county. Um, so my number one thing would be to repeal the right to use ordinance because here we are five years later and that ordinance is still on the books. Why well, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that since the beginning of time, no building's ever been built by humans for, the, for any other reason other than to use, for either to live in or to run a business. And in the Seabreeze's case, for both. And my biggest concern with this ordinance is that because of the recession, we have a lot of empty commercial buildings out there that have lost their right to use. And any dreamer that wants to start a small business is going to get trapped in the same ordinance uh, that, that I was trapped in. My second uh, thing I would do is I would eliminate additional fees charged to homeowners and businesses if they're red tagged by the county because this will remove the incentive for county workers to red tag unless it's absolutely necessary. Over the last five years, I've had dozens and dozens of homeowners and business owners come in and talk about the red tag process that I was put through and they were put through, and it seems like it's, it's a revenue generator for the county. And then my third one would be to implement a foreclosure moratorium and make a me mediation mandatory between the homeowner and the bank because an empty home in our county is a tragedy and it doesn't do anything for our businesses. Those people don't spend any money at our local businesses. Thank you. Well, first of all, I would never ask the people of this county for more money, more fees, more taxes. I know many people in this county, and there's people in this room who've lost their homes, they're under great stress, and I've actually been under great financial stress in the last few years, and I pay $6,000 a year in property tax, and I really don't know what I'm paying all that money for, so I would never ask the people for more money. I think it really has to start, someone has to step up and start with leadership, and I'm, I'm the only candidate who's offered to take when I'm elected, a 25% pay cut. None of the other candidates have offered 25%. And I want to put that money in a road repair fund. And I realize, you know, it's not going to solve everything, but it'll start. And this is a start. And, it, you know, start filling potholes. And I would ask the other three council members, or the board of supervisors, the members, Mr. Caput has already done it, to follow suit. And I would also ask the other high-paid the other high paid uh, uh, staff in the county to also take a pay reduction. And you know we're gonna go a long ways toward getting the potholes fixed. I think that's very important. Um, and uh, that's about it. I just think that we have to start. The county should start, and this, this is a good start. I will take a 25% pay reduction, so. Hi, Charles Paulden. Um, I agree with um, Mr. Hammer that we need to look at, at be critical thinkers using a systems analysis approach to have a synergy of uses. We need to look where our taxes are being spent. What are we, what are we supporting? I see a lot of um, backfilling for people that are working at exploited wages that can't afford education, health care, housing, food. I think we have to really be serious about a living wage ordinance. We should not allow people to be exploited. That way we would have a stable workforce instead of creating, bringing more and more people. The same things happens we see in LA. It seems to be we have these big governments that need their pensions paid so they'll bring in any tax base in a short term without looking at the full cost. Um, so we need to support local businesses for a stable workforce. The sales tax multiplier of a local business is the same as buying locally. They say it's 10 times. Say we got the same tax 10 times buying from ourselves, or that sales tax once by buying from an external corporation that takes our money and leaves. Um, all businesses are not local. 
Local businesses are much more important than those that are extracting resources from our county. A greater number of small family-run businesses will have, and farms will have a greater synergetic effect for a sustainable and vibrant local economy. The question, again, there seems to be an ideology that we have to widen the freeway. By spending $20 million of our local road fund on a state highway, so somebody can come from here to work over the hill does not make sense to me. To take $88 million and focus it on one mile between Chanticleer and, I mean, between Bromer and Capitola Road, 17 and Capitola Road, doesn't make sense. $88 million could be more distributed through our area. Thank you very much. When you ask what the three things I would do to uh, address the deficit, I have a, a, a good deal of experience. I served on the Cabrillo College Board for eight years, and during that time there were ebbs and flows, and it gave me good experience, and it taught me that during the good time you have to put the money away, and during the time I was there we doubled the size of the reserve, but also make difficult choices. Uh, since I've been a county supervisor, uh, we've never had a budget where we've had good times. I think we've cut uh, $60 million um, out of the budget, um, uh, over successive years of cuts. And it looks at, that in the near term that we're looking at another $15 million this year, and I'm not sure what the out years are. But there are three things that you do. One is you have to manage cost. Two is you have to deal with structural issues, budget issues. And three is you, you have to figure out a way to increase revenue. And um, in managing costs at the county, since I've been there, the first month I was there, I turned down a pay raise that had been voted on by a previous uh, board. The board did that unanimously. The second year, uh, we, uh, well, in that first budget year, we instituted furloughs uh, so we could keep the county government operating and providing services. The next year, we cut uh, a, a promised uh, increase uh, to executive management. They were due for a 2.5% increase. We canceled that. Uh, we also, uh, facing difficult times, merged departments together so we don't have an expensive uh, six-figure salary uh, director running the Parks Department. That's now been uh, merged in with the Public Works Department. People care about the parks, but we don't have the money to, to, to run two separate departments. We merged it into one. We've also dealt with structural issues, and we've uh, renegotiated all of our uh, employee contracts. Uh, we developed a, a two-tier pension system. Uh, we uh, uh, did something about um, uh, retiree health benefits, and uh, I guess uh, in the interest of time, I'll just say that increasing revenue, is. there's two parts to that. One is providing a system where you have a good, uh, a strong tax base. And the other is, if there are reasons to raise taxes, uh, you have to go out to the people and you have to ask them if they want to invest. Uh, Gary Richard Arnold. Um, I think we have to treat this as if we are going into bankruptcy. We're in a depression by design. and. I really don't believe that the, we should be moving into uh, public-private partnerships. It's just another name for, uh, for fascism and cronyism. Uh, one of the big problems is we adopted a, uh, an agenda, a final draft that's called Agenda 21. Our, our county has a contract with ICLE, which is a front for the World Bank, and they've adopted European uh, Union protocol. And we're suffering the same bad uh, economic results that Europe is... Uh, realizing because of these uh, protocols that uh, put this economy in a straitjacket. Um, also, I'm for uh, cutting those employees uh, that are earning over $80,000 by 15%, and I think the uh, Board of Supervisors should double that as uh, their emphasis on this going into the, uh, we really have to strip back. We are in a crisis at this particular time. We should also consider cutting our membership with AMBAG, which is the Association of Monterey Bay Area Governments. If you've ever gone to one of those meetings, uh, the lousy Sentinel newspaper will never report anything that goes on there, by the way. Um, and the adoptions at, uh, of, of policy and the stakeholders, they voted to put people on there that, that aren't elected to any office, and they make policy that controls us. It's like the tail wagging the dog. And the 60-page uh, uh, insult is absolutely incredible. It's a, it's a climate action strategy, and it does the same things. And the person that's in charge of this, by the way, has two uh, Leopold signs on his front lawn. Um, but it, it, yeah, you look at this stuff, you can look it up, and it, it, it'll make you cry. Uh, in addition to that, 
the Board of Supervisors voted five to nothing to release felons into the community. That means uh, higher insurance rates, uh, more problems with the hospital, higher taxes, et cetera. Uh, look up the Arnold Man Against Machine, Gary Richard Arnold, and you'll find a lot of hard data. Okay, this is the uh, last uh, question that will be answered for all the candidates, it's the same. Um, why should the business community have confidence that you, that you will make a positive difference on the issues impacting our economy? And Gary, we'll start with you. Well, I think what's really important, and you'll, you should look in every newspaper and on the uh, yard signs that you see everywhere, and take a look at how the endorsements crisscross. The people that have brought us to the position we're in today are the same ones that are endorsing each other. You look at uh, the mayor of Watsonville who put in the fluoride into that, that community. The, the community itself voted against it. It's a Malthusian political machine. They, they're doing things that injure your health. health. Uh, we've had Operation Cloverleaf that's run from uh, Fort Ord and Camp Roberts. You can go talk to the employees there. Some will talk and some won't. Uh, they certainly won't talk on camera. They know this is going on. We've got two members on the Board of Supervisors that are on the Air Resources Board, yet this was front page USA Today last May, and they said it's the worst case scenario. Those people that are treating people uh, health-wise, whether it's, it's vulnerable people that are old or young babies, that's a consistent problem. Um, we look at uh, uh, the other people that do the, the endorsements. Um, uh, Zach Friend, for instance, is the head of the, uh, the Democratic Central Committee. He gets one of his supporters is Sean Smith. He recruits for the World Bank. These guys are wedded to the World Bank. No policy here in this county comes from this, com from this county. It is rubber stamped and it's brought in by ICLEI, Agenda 21, and outside sources. And then what little... Uh, real policy they exercise, they run off to AMBAG and these other regional agencies and dispense with that authority. They're giving away your authority, you've invested in them, and they're not treating you right. They abolish the, the uh, Santa Cruz Board of Appeals uh, for the planning department. It's outrageous. And then they assume the authority. And then when they need an expert, they go to the planning department who they pay for. It's outrageous. And they're bringing in a type of fascism and world governance. They, they harm, they've been changing the laws. They call it harmonization. That's in preparation for a North American Union. These people are not looking out for you, and the damn Sentinel newspaper won't tell you about it. When I came into office, we were already uh, suffering from this lesser depression that, that the uh, entire nation and maybe the world is, is suffering from. And so as I led a planning process in the Live Oak and Soquel communities where 500 people got involved, um, they identified economic vitality as a key issue. Uh, part of that process is I reached out to the business community to make sure that their voice got heard as part of that as, as well as everyone else and, and brought uh, county uh, administration to be part of that discussion as well. We got some good information from that. I also asked that uh, our board do study sessions on economic development and we had two uh, uh, sessions and I reached out to the uh, business council and the chambers to get involved with that discussion. Uh, it was an interesting discussion. It was not fully participated by all the members of the board, but it, it, we, we got some good information that laid the groundwork uh, for us adding economic development staff. Uh, I was surprised that when I came to the uh, Board of Supervisors that, there, uh, that although the county uh, works with the unincorporated area, that's over 50% of the population, there wasn't one person who thought about economic uh, development and the economic lives of our community every day, all day. I worked to change that and got the first economic development staff hired. Uh, uh, we've also tried to uh, reach out and include uh, the business community in decisions. As I mentioned earlier around non-conforming structures, we did special focus groups. Uh, our new planning director uh, went out uh, as she started her tenure to find out what the issues were. Uh, I've been pushing at the economic development study session. I was pushing that we need to do a serious business permit reform because I hear from uh, business owners in my district regularly how difficult it is to open up a business in a commercially zoned area in an existing building uh, with a permitted use. And I've worked to clear those hurdles, uh, but uh, they shouldn't have to depend on just the intervention of a, of a supervisor. We should have a, a system that works well. And uh, we won't be getting to that until the fall, but it's a priority for me uh, to get this done, and I think we can do it. Hi, Charles Paulden again. Um, as a local business person with a f 
a fifth generation Californian, 40 year resident, um, who has a landscape contractor's license of business and also works as an independent contractor in the fitness and health industry. Um, I am one of the people, like most of the taxpayers, that are creating the true economy of our area. There, I, I really respect our government workers, yet we are the ones that are actually creating the base. Um, I can relate to the problems and the concerns of people in the trades and businesses. I know very many of them. Um, I have worked in most of the trades and businesses in this county and, and through direct experience understand our concerns and needs. When I work, I need to stay on budget. I have to give good value for my services. While many of us have seen our real wages go down to wa due to wave inflation and pressures of people who are using exploitable labor, not playing by the rules, the rest of us, our income, the people that really are paying the taxes and playing by the rules, that goes down. So we have less taxes to support the, the government. Um, when I was working in the Pleasure Point plan to start that and trying to preserve a community center and a cultural center in Pleasure Point to build around the surf industry, which is a $400 million income to this county, rivaling ag, I was suggesting that we have a surf museum. Now, 10 years later or so, it's been recognized we have a surf reserve, but we do not have a place to meet in my community. I think that $88 million in RDA money could be better spent. It should be sent back to the state to provide us with funding. It should not be just special interest getting special treatment for a very few. Thank you. Well, I would say as being a small business owner in this county for 17 years, I understand the difficulties of being a small business owner. In the past, I've had employees. I've had to do payroll. I've had to do workman's comp. It's a big hassle. We all know how it is in business. Um, I'm a firm believer in private property. I'm a firm believer in free enterprise. And I think that's very important. And uh, you know, I've been through the whole process. I've built houses in the past, not my company, but I've worked for people, other contractors, built houses. So I have a, a, a pretty good grasp on business. And uh, I think that would qualify me. I believe as a small business person struggling in, in a uh, difficult economy, the business community knows that I'm in the same boat as they are. And I will work tirelessly to reduce or better yet eliminate our burdensome government regulations and taxes as well as promote our <laughs> county to visitors outside our county that drive our local economy. As part of my duties as supervisor, I will personally walk my district and meet with every business owner and get to know their business needs at least those ones that haven't come into my business already. And um, start a business task force of the second district to find out what, these hur what the hurdles are for all the different industries we have within Santa Cruz County, and then work to lower or eliminate those redundant or unnecessary ordinances that are passed um, to catch businesses in these revenue traps. Unfortunately, these ordinances make it impossible for anyone to start a small business unless, unless they have deep pockets. And our small businesses are really the backbone of our economy. They, they hire our kids, they collect our sales tax, and they advertise in our local newspapers. And they provide us with locally made products and services that make Santa Cruz unique, or you, know, you could say weird. And um, if you've ever been to the Seabreeze Tavern, you know that I'm a big fan of unique or weird. And um, that's what I believe why people come to Santa Cruz County, and I, and I think they come from all over the world because of the county we have, but the businesses need your support and they need a, a better regulatory environment in order to survive. Thank you. Well, first I'd just like to say that I wish I was half as cool as Gary Richard Arnold makes me sound, so thanks Gary for that. Um, and you know, I think fundamentally, the ultimately the way that you have the confidence in this issue is, is through in any relationship is through trust and it, it didn't occur to me to start reaching out to the business community the minute that I started running for office. I've had a relationship with the business community ever since I've been here. Uh, I've got a tr proven track record of it working for the Santa Cruz Police Department over the last decade where I've reached out to neighborhood groups, nonprofits, business community and, 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 and uh, others in order to develop these relationships. 
the thing is, is that I, I think that you, you can approach this situation with, with the negativity that I've been hearing a lot up here, or you can, you can actually try and turn it around. We recognize there are problems. I mean, we can complain about them, or we can actually try and address them. I'd like to hear a little bit more solution-oriented, a little bit more optimism associated with it, because the reality is local businesses are starting to hire. The reality is, is that things could be getting better, and we recognize that there are issues that we can overcome. Look at what's happened with Next Space, with Cruzio. Look at what happened when Jack O'Neill started a business here, Martinelli's. There is a history here of success in business. What you need are boards of supervisors members that help change that tone, that bring that kind of hope toward this situation. And I think that that, that is something that I can do for this situation. I already have the, the relationships established with the local business community, and I hope to continue that on the board of supervisors. Thank you. Okay, I think you know one of the things that um, being a two-term mayor and and being the city council for eight years prepared me to to deal with this. Kind of, we have done it in the city of Watsonville. I have a very uh, close relationship with all the business, especially the small businesses. Like we have started the incubator in the city of Watsonville. The other things that we have done for the act community is that to stop the salt insertion, we we able to have money for to uh, to develop the the new recycle plant because that's very important for the act community so it continues, so the selling interest doesn't continue, so it's very important for the business community. Another thing that we have done is that uh, we develop a, a, the strawberry, um, the strawberry uh, industrial park, in which the new concept was is to, they be, they be able to set up their business at the same time they can be able to own the business. That's something that we have about 30 businesses in, in, in that area that was developed under my, in, under my leadership. And, and also the city council, we're part of it. And the fast shops, you know, one of the one of the test stories that we have in our in our, in our in our city, in which they had three ships working, and they and they provide you know globally uh, the parts they throughout the world. The Allo and the CSC, which do the lenses, same thing. I think you know the community that we have, we have developed very strong. The Martinellis is the other ones that have been very successful within the city, and I think other ones. The AC community has always been very successful in different ways, and we have to continue that and support the, the small business. I think, I, you know, the, the county of Santa Cruz are very creative and innovative, and I think we have to do that. Continue to provide opportunities so that they can be creative. I think the new, uh, the new, the, the youth that is coming into this place, I think they, they want to start business, they want to be creative, they want to be part of this community, so we have to give in that opportunity to them. As something that we have to continue to, the the, uh, the 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 education institution is very is another thing that we continue. I will stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, a small business owner. I have a construction company up in the San Lorenzo Valley, and as the economic times have have hit us all, my company has changed. Uh, I used to do project management. I built a multi-million dollar building up in San Francisco that employed over 250 people on every given day. I managed a budget of about $42 million and coordinated all the sub, subcontractors, county, architects, you name it, what it takes to build a facility like that in the heart of the city. And uh, parking, a little bit difficult with that many people. I changed the focus of my business. My guys that work for me haven't missed a day of work in the downturn. Today, I've got seven jobs lined up. And I have that because I have a great reputation, I'm a hard worker, and I make an impact in the community in which I serve. Uh, and that's done through a lot of partnerships. Sitting on the board of Boulder Creek Parks and Rec, we were able to build a $350,000 park utilizing uh, local business, local contractors that donated their time. And in doing that, you get out, you, you, you're marketing yourself. Uh, through Mountain Community Resource Center. Uh, we were able to create a sustainable uh, a program uh, through merging with Community Bridges. Again, when any time Mountain Community Resource Center needs something done, you know, they can call me and I can go out into that community and I'll get it done. Uh, I got a call from the school at Boulder Creek Elementary. They needed a greenhouse built for the kids so that they could learn about nutritious, nutritious foods and farming. You know what? I didn't have the time or necessarily the resources, but I stepped right up. And my guys, we built that greenhouse. It was out there a week later. I get things done, and that's why I'm running. Uh, and you ask, why should you invest in me? Because everybody in my community invests in me. They turn to me when something needs to get done, and I fulfill that. Thank you. 
I'd answer it in uh, two, three-tiered ways. Uh, first, experience that I've had both in the private and public sector. Uh, secondly, the knowledge that I have of the issues, both as uh, a news newspaper person who wrote uh, stories about this county and knows the issues and editorial opinions for 10 years, and personal contacts, which are vitally important on every level of government to make sure and to see that the 5th District in Santa Cruz County gets its fair share of resources, a dwindling as they may be from the state. But I think that experience is really very critical in what we're talking about and what we need to have happen in this county. I've seen some things that have worked, and I've seen some things that have failed in this county. And I think that uh, I would be a, I've, when I was in the legislature, I was known as the most independent vote in the legislature, a problem, sol a problem solver, and a consensus builder. And the other three part, part of my answer is that I've, I've experienced what it means to live within your means, which we have to do at the county, and I wish the state and federal government had to do the same. But as the private sector, as one of the owners of the newspaper that was successful, has been successful, uh, that I left in 1991. Secondly, with the charitable organizations, too numerous to name, to really go after some very ambitious projects that really required community input, not the least of what is, which is this museum that we're sitting in tonight, but Cabrillo College and its 50th anniversary scholarship fund, Land Trust of Santa Cruz County, which is great, the Marine Center that's at the entrance of the wharf, and thirdly, government itself. I am known, as I said, as the most independent vote in the legislature. I know how to get things done, and I've lived within my means in the private, the public, and the charitable sector in which I've served this great county of Santa Cruz. Thank you. <laughs> um, if, if you would have Googled uh, economic development about three or four years ago, you would have been led to the redevelopment agency for the Santa Cruz County. And yeah, I believe Le um, Mr. Leopold deserves credit for hiring some people that are full-time. Uh, I, I believe that his name's Mr. David Dobson that's working on el economic development. And um, so anyway, and I always felt that career politicians have had problems conflicting with each other, basically trying to keep their jobs and, and playing these political games and not, and w when it really works is when, and, and it's, this includes the Board of Supervisors of Santa Cruz County, to have some supervisors that come up with some good ideas, bring them to the table, and then once they are on the table to brainstorm them, them and refine them into something that really works and helps the, helps the public. My idea is this economic development board, which um, I know Sonoma County has, Monterey County has a, some also have, has a full-time staff, but I believe you know this can be restructured so that it would be really beneficial. And it would consist entirely of business professionals, a diverse, we don't want all restaurant owners, we want, we want, you know, business builders, and we want, you know, try to get a diverse economic account to review, to expand businesses that are actually involved, have a relationship with the county, but also the second half is really to make the county more efficient, to be more customer friendly and orientated because the county has a huge direct involvement with the economy. They are the, the I believe, the second most uh, uh, largest employer of the county but behind UCSC. So, and then also the, uh, particularly the planning department and the building department have a direct involvement with the economy. We can keep Santa Cruz weird, but now we can start making it smart. Vote for Bill Smallman, thank you. As the microphone is passed to the other, other end of the table, our next phase of questions are specific to each candidate. There are two questions that were developed by a committee, and I want to emphasize again that my friend Jess Brown and I are reading the questions. We didn't write them. <laughs> so if you love them, we don't get credit. If you don't like them, please think kindly about us. <laughs> and the first question is to Mr. Arnold. 
Your response to the question, what role would you play as a county supervisor in improving water security in Santa Cruz County, was that you would reintroduce reservoirs and cisterns. Where would those reservoirs and cisterns be located, and if on private property, who would pay for their construction, and how would you cause enough people to place them on their property to have a significant impact on water supply? Well, I have not studied that, and I, <clears throat> I don't know. But uh, I know throughout the state that there's been a uh, progressive plan of uh, blowing up uh, dams and reducing water for access for food supply. Uh, part of it's referred to as rural cleansing. We have a California so-called connectivity project, which uh, our planning department is involved with. And if people saw from 10 years ago that the United States Senate voted 99 to nothing to nix the so-called wildlands project. Uh, the access to private property and the uh, attempt to put in water meters some years ago was met uh, in force uh, at the county. Um, I think it's important, I think the uh, governor of Colorado said that uh, private property and access to water, it has to be uh, either purchased, um, uh, it, it should not be taken. And he said that these, this uh, particular issue is uh, so important that it may uh, reach the point to where it uh, uh, is uh, such a crisis it would match that of uh, the Civil War. But. Um, as far as the specifics, I don't have the specifics. Okay, this is your uh, second question. Okay. Uh, to a question about how you would change the current allocation of county resources to be more ef effective in addressing public safety, you responded that you would allow retired police officers and military to have concealed weapon permits, as well as designated owners or officers of bank jewelry stores and other high crime targets. In general, do you believe that local government should provide fewer services and that the responsibilities of those services should be transferred to residents? If so, which public services, if any, would you choose not to transfer to residents? Well, obviously, uh, when it comes to uh, prosecution, um, uh, items such as that, uh, I really believe that the first part of that statement we find in states where there is carry permits that the safety expands uh, you know, quite quite radically. And I think initially uh, that the businesses do need to be able to protect themselves. That would benefit both the, uh, the police, the people that are living in there, and uh, create uh, widespread safety. And I think that could be, I'd like to see that expanded until it becomes uh, universal. Um, I think uh, some of the um, some of the streets uh, throughout the uh, county. I believe the individuals from uh, various communities and neighborhoods could take care of that uh, by going out with uh, merely a broom. Um, we've got uh, a path over where I live by the Live Oak by the Moran Lagoon, and most of the work is done there. In fact, the county's been pulling back. Uh, uh, trash barrels and so forth and, and, and taking them out of the community and the people are stepping up and, and taking care of uh, tasks such as that. Um, anyway, I think, I think there's a lot of ways in which uh, uh, people can participate and uh, save the government some money and be a good neighbor. The next question is for, for Mr. Leopold. You indicated in your written answers that you were not a fan of contracting out services currently performed by the public sector. You said we should expect the same entrepreneurial spirit out of public sector employees as those in the private sector. What do you think are the key elements of the entrepreneurial spirit, and what does the county do to encourage them in its employees? Well, I'll just give you an example we're working on right now. The Simpkins Swim Center, which is a, a great resource in uh, Live Oak, but is available to the entire county and, and well-loved, uh, is not open enough hours. So there's been a suggestion that we contract that out. Um, but if you look at what it, what it would take to contract out uh, the services there, you would study what has been successful in other places. You would figure out where, where your strategic niche is and what you could uh, pool from the success of another pool. Um, and you would look to institute that, hopefully not just on the backs of the people who work there by paying them less money, but by being more successful in marketing your product. So uh, I've pulled together the, uh, the Parks and, and Public Works Administration, as well as the uh, constituent unions, uh, to take a look at that box. What is the budget of the, uh, 
of the uh, pool? How do uh, we increase the number of hours and days that it's open? Um, and what can we pull from, the, uh, from successes in Menlo Park and other places uh, to replicate here? Uh, not everything's the same, but as, in a business, you don't just start off and say, we're not going to look at what other people do. We're going to try to figure out what's successful other places um, and enact it here. I think that we should expect that our public sector employees uh, be creative, uh, strategic, and entrepreneurial, uh, and, and do the research and be creative and work outside the box. And we shouldn't just assume that they won't be able to do that. Second question. Uh, you indicated you supported the implementation of the agreement between the UCSC, the City of Santa Cruz, the county, and other settling lawsuits. However, you introduced a resolution at LAFCO that would dissolve key elements requiring UCSC to develop student housing to reduce the student housing impact on neighborhoods and remove the obligation of the university to many other elements of the agreement related to transportation, water, and contribution to city impacts. How do you reconcile these positions? I disagree with the frame of the question. I actually made a resolution to approve uh, the water going to the university and allow them to expand into 240 acres to build 3 million square feet of, of uh, new development. Um, the city and university agreed to go to LAFCO. LAFCO didn't choose that. Um, the, uh, in, in doing that, uh, in preparation for that, our board came up with a set of water policies that had a, that had a simple message, do you have an adequate, reliable, and sustainable water supply? That was uh, unanimously approved by our, by our commission including this uh, supervisor community and the mayor of uh, Santa Cruz, Don Lane. So when this proposal comes before us, the question is, uh, what is an adequate, reliable, and sustainable water supply? The city has significant, outstanding, unanswered questions about whether the Department of Fish and Game and NOAA Fisheries is going to require them to leave a, a large amount of water in the streams that they will not be able to access. That has a tremendous impact on our on the availability of water. And before we promise 150 million gallons uh, to one user, uh, we should make sure that we have enough for our current, for our current customers. Um, and uh, so I don't think that's breaking the agreement. I think that is uh, respecting the agreement, uh, also respecting the community. And uh, it, 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 to think that you could go to LAFCO and not have any conditions placed on you, would, was an unrealistic expectation. These are reasonable expectations that were supported by a majority of, uh, of the commission. Next question is for Mr. Paulden. In response to a question regarding streamlining processes, reducing costs, and reducing uncertainty in land use decision making, you answered probably not. You were the only candidate to do so, saying, I think it is too easy to bypass the feedback from the community that creates high quality communities. Please give us an example of a land use decision that you felt too easily bypassed the feedback from the community and indicate how you would have changed the processes to make the decision better. It's too bad you didn't give me my uh, strong points. But as a member of the Sierra Club Executive Committee, I believe that CEQA is a very important document and should not be thrown out the window. I think that our communities have the right to have a say. The high quality communities. Paso Tiempo, Depot Hill, Carmel, Monterey, Montecito, the places that people, there's a high quality place to live. You have a lot of feedback from the people. I believe that we should protect our wildlands. We should protect our open spaces. We should look at the general plan that says we should step back from our streams and make them places for groundwater recharge. When I led one of the charges to have the Atherton Place development which is sitting uncompleted as part of a nice into the sea trail to New Brighton Beach with a bridge over the freeway that would take people from the rail trail to Cabrillo College, I was told by the supervisors that there was no other place to do urban infill. I have a place to do urban infill. The Dominican to 41st quadrant to put a high quality urban core like San Luis Obispo, like Santana Row like Stanford um, Park. These are the places we can build a high quality community, high value, build our brand, build our tax bases, do things efficiently with our people, local jobs, local people, preserve, protect, and advance. No. 
Um, you were the only candidate who didn't support the agreement between UCSC, the city, the county, and neighborhood organizations settling a number of lawsuits and disputes related to housing, transportation, water, and other areas of shared interest. You responded by saying that we need to stop the growth at UCSC in, um, in Santa Cruz in this constricted and environmentally sen sensitive area. Do you believe that it would be in the best interest of the county to abandon this agreement and reinstitute the lawsuits attempting to limit UCSC growth in Santa Cruz? What also, what duty, if any, do you believe Santa Cruz City and the county have to the state of California to support the delivery of higher education to residents of this state? When UCSC was brought to Santa Cruz, Fort Ord was not available. Fort Ord would be a perfect place. The University of Fort Ord UFO, we could have little otters and spaceships. They have the infrastructure, they have the space, they have the roads, they have empty buildings. UCSC, when I first came here, it was a great place. It helped us to save Lighthouse Field. It helped us to save North Coast. It helped us in all the environmental things that make this place the wonderful place we are today. Wilder Ranch is not an extension of Orange County. But UCSC is now wants to grow into its most environmentally sensitive area, the forest behind them. We do not have the access to that place, and building the access will decrease the value of our community. So what we could do, we could, as I said, we could, they have satellite places in Cupertino. Why not in Watsonville? Why does it all go on a hill in a constricted area? We do not have the water. And the other thing, the one benefit of putting the university as a donut hole was that we were providing housing and getting all the money from those students. Now we're told that we're not going to make that money, that the students are going to stay on the upper campus where they cut down the trees. So uh, yes, I do not think that's a good critical thinking analysis. I don't think it's good urban planning. And I do stand by my statement. First question from the committee for Mr. Beckett. You indicated in your answers that LAFCO and the Coastal Commission should not be involved in local land use decisions. You also indicate that you would favor reducing local regulation of businesses. The majority of the county board has obviously not shared your opinion over the past several decades. How would you be effective as a supervisor in reducing the county's role in regulating business if a majority of the board did not support this goal? Well, I guess I would have to try to influence the board to uh, see it my way more. Um, I believe these decisions should be made on the local level, as local as possible. Like I say, I'm not a big uh, proponent of LAFCO and these other outside organizations making our decisions here locally. So I guess I would just have to try to use my influence as best as possible. Second question. Uh, you indicated that you would probably not support the county's continuing effort to achieve the goals of the Climate Action Compact to which it subscribed with the city and UCSC, uh, UCSC in 2007. You were one of only two candidates who indicated they were not inclined to support the can con county's continued participation in this agreement to reduce greenhouse gases. Do you believe that government agencies like the county should take action to reduce greenhouse gases and other causes of global war warming? And if not, why not? Well, global warming has never really been proved. It's a theory. In fact, there are 91,000 scientists. Many of these people are PhDs who've signed a document, or, or pardon me, it's 31,000, I believe, who've signed a document that say they don't believe that global warming is happening. You have, I forget the number, but it's far, far less people have signed another agreement who say they believe that global warming is occurring, but they're really not professionals. They're not scientists. So I don't think the issue of global warming has been, uh, has been made, and so therefore I would not support anything in regards to uh, pursuing global warming. Mr. McKinnis, you indicated that you would remove the county red tape and revenue traps that drive businesses away. The committee notes that this sounds very good to every business person, but the devil is, as always, in the details. What process would you propose to systematically evaluate and modify rules and regulations, and what would you do to overcome the resistance of staff and other board members to these changes? Well, I, I mentioned earlier, I'd immediately go out and meet with everybody in my district, business by business, 
and um, find out um, what issues and regulations are currently um, um, strapping them um, either from expanding or hiring more employees. And, and I've heard some ridiculous issues that have come up and uh, put that task force together by by industry so that way you have people from the restaurant business such as me and maybe somebody from manufacturing somebody from um, uh, there's several other industries that we have here in the county I'm sorry I can't think right now but I'd put that I'd put that task force together and I'd go through with them and figure out what are those issues that are impacting them and at, at that time I would take that to the board and work through it with the board as far as how do we reduce or eliminate these these uh, red tags or these uh, regulations that are hurting business so that they can hire more more people in the county and put people back to work that that would be my um, my process Question. You supported the proposal for an additional $10 per vehicle license fee to support street and road maintenance. Are there other tax or fee measures you would support to address particular issues within the county? And if so, which issues would you address and with what additional revenue sources? I wouldn't, I don't, I believe there's probably no other fees that I would support. And I said probably yes. I didn't say definitely yes on that. And I, because, and my, the only reason is because every hearing that I have attended, um, there's always talk about the roads. And unfortunately, the roads in our county are potted and um, they need to be repaired. And the only reason I would support some sort of a tax like that is if we had complete control of that, that increase those funds and they went specifically to our roads and the board of supervisors or whatever agencies that's controlling that money can't reapply it to some other uh, fund or uh, fee or some other project that they want they decide they want to move that fund money that money to so i say probably yes but i'm not really sure depending on exactly how that money would be managed and whether or not it would exactly go to roads or not thank you Next question is the first question for Mr. Friend. You answered probably no to the creation of a second tier employment contract that would reduce pension benefits for new employees. You said I don't believe it is uh, I don't believe it is the two tier system that will create long term sustainability. In a recent countywide poll of businesses, two thirds of the respondents favored further cuts in public pensions. It is likely that this reflects public anger at the public sector's defined benefit plans. These have been virtually unheard of in the private sector for more than a quarter century. What do you say to the private sector employees, managers, and owners who have only their own savings or at best a defined contribution plan that lost value over the past few years and are angry about this disparity? The average PERS employee, and PERS is the, is the retirement system, earns $20,500 a year in retirement, which I would argue is not exactly a lavish sum. When you create a two-tier system, you generally don't see savings for anywhere between 13 and 20 years to the organization that creates the two-tier system. I think it's important, and in my own personal union, I voted in favor of it, because it sends a message about economic and fiscal stability. But the reality is, is that what's bankrupting cities and counties is actually on the benefit side. The second part of my answer focused on the benefit side, that there needs to be some sort of mitigations for those costs. On average, the city and the county have experienced 25 to 27 percent increases in health care costs over the last five years, as have private sector businesses. I think that the public pension system, the two-tier system, isn't how you create the long-term fiscal stability. It's actually in, a, in uh, capping these, uh, the growth in the, in the health care and the other benefit costs. So I think the greater focus should be on the benefit concessions over the specific two-tier system. Uh, second question, responding to the question regarding the economic impact of traffic on Highway 1, you uh, recounted several examples of how uh, significant that economic impact is on residents in the mid and southern portion of the county. Several other candidates disagree. Recognizing the significant cost and political challenge of this issue, what would you expect to do as supervisor to reduce this economic impact? Traffic issues have a disproportionate impact on the second district. I mean, anybody that's had to sit in that traffic would understand that, and I think also the fourth district as well. I mean, I've, the stories I was telling are stories I've heard as I've been meeting voters. I, I met a single mother who lives in Watsonville, works in Santa Cruz, she earns thirteen fifty an hour. She commutes during the regular hours and told me that it's an extra hour of daycare that she can't afford because of the highway. 
I mean, I've, I've talked to business owners such as Granite Rock that talks about the inability for them to know when their delivery times will be. And I think part of the problem is, is that you can't have a general plan process that forces development toward the mid and south county and not have any kind of mitigations for transportation, which is exactly what happened. It creates a wild amount of externalities. Think about the impacts of the Power Valley Unified School District. The city of Watsonville hasn't been able to hire additional police or fire. All of that is our land use decisions that the county supervisor makes. One of the most, in fact, probably the most important thing that a county supervisor does is land use decisions. And we've made, as in the county board, has made decisions over the last 30 years that's disproportionately impacted the southern portion of the county. And I think that infrastructure and traffic improvements need to be mitigated. Next question is the first question for Mr. Rivas. You indicated that you did not support changes in deed restrictions on the Manabe Owl property or the annexation of the agricultural land bordering Beach Street near Watsonville. Some past and some current members of the Watsonville City Council argue that this is necessary to alleviate Watsonville's chronic unemployment problem. What would you do as a county supervisor to significantly reduce chronic unemployment in South County? I think one of the things that um, when I was in the uh, city council and mayor, I think we, I made the decision that we we're going to support the contract the way it was, the Manabe Al um, Industrial Park. It's very important to, to, to promise that though we have negotiated at the beginning. I know that the current city council members have do some changes, but I'll continue to support what I have decided in the past. And, and in regards to, uh, mitigating the uh, in regards to uh, unemployment that was very high to to our city of Watsonville is to continue to uh, to develop the entrepreneurship into our city of Watsonville also to in, to develop more industrial parks to be able to be able to provide like we did the strawberry uh, industrial park in which business can be able to own their property and also conduce business at the same time like we did you know uh, also the other thing is be able to uh, sustain the health uh, care systems is very important that we continue to support the health care systems within our city. Uh, the other thing that is very important, the incubators that we have developed, and which uh, one of the things that has been done in the city of Watsonville is to be able to bring a building and then at the same time business can be able to provide, you know, the training and at the same time they can be able to help business throughout the community. And that's something that's going on in, in the community. The incubators have been a very successful uh, way of uh, uh, helping and develop business within, within our city. Mm -hmm. You indicated that you would provide tax incentives for our local business and agricultural industry. What taxes would you reduce or rebate as incentives, and what would businesses and agriculture have to do to earn those incentives? Uh, what, it, what it is, is very important that the ag community continue to be successful in our city of Watsonville. And one of the things that I will do is to meet with the business community and the ag community to be able to say, what is the things that you really need to be able to support? We have a great enterprise zone. This is something that we had in the city of Watsonville that would provide a lot of incentives and to hire people and reduce the cost so, that, so they can be able to hire locally employees. I think the enterprise zones, I think something that we could we can we can use that concept within the city and also in the county and if we can follow that model that would be great for for our county as well as our city first question for mr hammer you selected the option choose not to answer to the question should the county significantly simplify and streamline its discretionary land use permit process you further indicated that the process needs to be simplified but that environmental safeguards should not be lifted if the natural elements of the environment, such as flora, fauna, water, geology, and archaeology, could be protected through good planning and enforcement, would you be willing to reduce or eliminate the rights of NIMBY neighbors to delay, drive up the cost, and in many cases effectively veto the development rights of property owners who otherwise meet the county's planning and zoning requirements? I got an answer for that. Um, I think I deal with this every day in my... In, in my current position. Um, I think what you're looking at is on a discretionary permit, the amount of time that's in, that, that you have to go through and the implications that the NIMBYism that you're talking about play into that. Um, you could put two years, and a lot of times you're putting two years worth of time, energy, and money into the research of a, of a project. And the 
process in which the neighbors can slow a project down by it goes through uh, zoning administrator then goes from the zoning administrator to the planning department from the planning department to the board of supervisors and then at that point you know I, I believe it's not unless you want to go with a further lawsuit each time you have to spend money I think that you've got a lot of projects that are good projects that can bring jobs and you've spent a ton of money uh, because you ha the developers have to supply all the information, the soils that you're talking about, the geo that you're talking about, the structural and, and architectural plans. You know, there needs to be a process in which that can be simplified before you have to put all that money out so that you can get a yes or no answer on a project before you develop that. You saw that happen in Santa Cruz recently. There was millions of dollars invested in a project, and then it got overturned. If you know going into that 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 project has a high likelihood of being overturned, you're not going to spend those resources. Uh, you suggested that to improve the county's fiscal integrity and sustainability, you would involve the community in the decision-making process. The county's budget process is months long, resulting in a budget book that is inches thick based upon the developmental work of many dozens, if not hundreds, of work groups within the county government. What process do you propose to effectively engage the community, and how do you believe that they will that will improve the integrity and sustainability of county government i think you have to include the public in all the decisions that you're making so that they have ownership in the decisions that are happening good or bad um, and i think you have to do that by educating them and putting it out there you're seeing that happening right now in the building department uh, as mr leopold stated the new planning director has reached out to the community had meetings in every section of this community put out wide mailers to, to business owners architects and the community out of those meetings focus meetings she was able to identify people that wanted to continue that process and that and once they continued that process they were able to take a look at each piece of non-conforming uh, uh, changes to, to to the policy and they have ownership in it I think that we have to do the same thing with the budgetary process. Do I think that everybody's going to understand it or everybody's going to want to be part of it? No. But there's going to be a certain amount of people that want to. And then they can stand up in their own community and say, hey, I took part in that. They reached out. This is the decisions that were made. You know, there is no easy solution to our budget. If there was, you know, nobody would be unhappy. I mean, it's a very difficult process. And there's, you, there's going to be jobs that are lost. You're going to see departments being merged. You're going to see a lot of creativity on how to sustain the programs that we have. You're going to see some of those programs, you know, diminish. I guarantee there's not one worker there that is enjoying the furlough right now, the furloughs that they're taking. But they're taking it because they want to make a difference. They believe in this community, and they believe in the county. First question for Mr. McPherson. You propose to improve county government's fiscal integrity and sustainability through performance-based budgeting. You recognize the complexity of the county's services, its role as an implementation tool of state policy with many activities dictated by the legislature, and the already stretched personnel resources of the county. Who do you think should establish these performance expectations and how should they be measured? I think we, we should do it ourselves with the help of others. And there's uh, a lot of examples that I've been associated with uh, who have suggested some other budgeting processes that I think we should follow and put in place. One, one is, uh, I think, a, a two-year budgeting cycle. It's difficult enough with one, and it's hard to project for two years. I understand that. But I think it would give everybody a sense of where our priorities are in the budgeting process, because the budget is the roadmap to where the county's priorities are, are made, or where they are, and where they're going to go in the future. I think also an a, absolute necessity is a pay-as-you-go mentality, that if you're going to create a new program or reduce something else or give something a, 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 somebody else a break, how are you going to fill that in the projected revenue source that you have and your county budget. We have to really be serious and, and get down to the nitty gritty, so to speak, about how much new programs are going to cost if we should be able to, to get them or to be changing them in the process. 
Performance-based budgeting is something that uh, many local uh, governments and the state government, I think, is going to get into, and I think it is a, the key element of a new budgeting process. You can have matrices to say, I'm going to give you a million dollars to say how many, what you're going to do to this for this roads or the prison system or whatever, and then you show me the results after a year or two, and if you haven't reached them, then we change the, the performance-based budgeting and get some more standards in place. We don't have those measurements now. Uh, second question, you indicated that the county should take an active role in the development of measures to stop the intrusion of salt water in the Pajaro Valley aquifers. Under what authority do you believe the county should act and what role should it take in resolving what to date has proven to be an intractable problem? Now, this is a big problem and the water problem that we have uh, matches the infrastructure problems that we have in transportation and the sewage system, but water is the critical, the basis of all of it. We, uh, as a county, need to do what we can do, uh, maybe to have new sources where we can uh, retain water, to replenish our aquifers, and to promote uh, agreements between different water agencies so they can have tie-ins to one another. So when one is having more of an abundance of water than the other, it can, it can uh, help that other water district out and replenish its aquifers. We have a big problem right now that's just waiting to happen in Lompico in the San Lorenzo Valley. Uh, there's a lot of talk about San Lorenzo Valley Water District and the Lompico Water District of making that tie-in. And it should be made, I believe, but that's up to the districts. We can promote that and, and say that this is what you should do or, or try to be uh, an intermediary, if you will, to make that happen. Uh, I think that an intertie between the other, uh, the, the various agencies is critical and at a time we need to replenish the, the aquifers when we have water in abundance because if we get saltwater intrusion, that source is gone forever and it's going to be critically important that we have those aquifers available uh, for our water systems and the agricultural community that is so important to our economy. First question for Mr. Smallman. In responding to a question about the sufficiency of water supply in Santa Cruz County and Soquel Creek water districts, you argue against desalinization, attribute the overdrafting of the Soquel Creek water district's aquifers to berry production, and challenge the question's assertions regarding past analyses of water supply with the question, whose analyses? These positions are all contrary to the studies of external ex experts and the professional staffs of the two water districts. As a county supervisor, what do you believe the role of staff and experts should be in advising you and the county board regarding complex technical matters such as water supply? Well, I, I believe the study that, you know, um, I, I do believe that the, we're using too much water in the South County and I believe in the saltwater intrusion is happening. Um, I, you know, I believe that we need to talk to the agriculture um, uh, industry in the South County, possibly look into changing um, there may be some other lucrative crops that use less water um, and maybe ways to grow berries using less water. These things have not been, you know, brought to the table. And I, I do believe, in, in, in regard to the desalination plant, um, it costs, you know, oh, four to five times more uh, cost to, 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 to produce this water. Um, and, you know, a lot of people have said, oh, well, Santa Cruz, the city of Santa Cruz has won awards in water conservation, but that's basically, you know, from, you know, low flow toilets and water residential use, but they, they haven't implemented any reclaimed water usage or storm drain design or, or building of water storage facilities, which $120 million would go a long ways, which I'd like to, I'd like to look into besides using the desalination plant. So I publicly announced that I am against the desalination plant and I, I, would, I promote water conservation method, methods over that. Thank you. Question. Um, in response to the question, what would, um, what would you prioritize in efforts to support the economic vitality in commercial agriculture in Santa Cruz County? You responded, find a product which uses less water and makes more money. How would you go about finding that product? I, I think you're referring to, I think I mentioned about, uh, you know, in South County about the berry production. 
I, I would like to, you know, to talk to the agriculture uh, industry down there to possibly look into, you know, you know, I know your long-term people that lived here, here, uh, the that used to be apple orchards. What's there's still some apple orchards, but possibly looking into. I'm not saying that's absolutely absolutely viable to put looking into another agricultural product that, um, or possibly even growing berries, but using less water. Uh, because it's a big problem, and and the studies have shown that actually the desalination plant is not isn't really going to solve it. Um, those the berry growers, um, if you listen to Mr. Deech, <laughs> but uses um, a for you know a lot of uh, too much water. So um, that was my point with that response. Thank you. Final question. We'll start uh, on that. We can stay on that end. Each candidate will answer this final question. You will be relieved to know, and I'm relieved to read, there are only seven words to this question. <laughs> Why should business people vote for you? Um, like I said, you know, it's been tough <laughs> to, not, to, to, to not be a career politician and um, get into, you know, uh, like the, the unions. They want, they, the Sentinel wants to vote or endorse the person that's going to win. But I do believe that career politicians, the problem really is, is the conflict and trying to keep your job and, and how it really works and how it will, will, will work with the, the Board of Supervisors to have the Board of Supervisors that doesn't conflict, comes to agreement, but brings to the table really good ideas and that those good ideas that that board brainstorms together as would a successful company, you know, like say Apple Computer or something, the, the, the people get together. Um, my, big, my, my, my most proudest idea is really, the, I, I believe the addition of the Board of Economic Development is needed here. There's other counties that have it. And like we said, we only just have a couple people that ha just got hired a full-time staff for um, economic development. And it's really kind of new to this county. The, Santa Cruz County really is like sort of a follower we're very lucky where we live. It's a beautiful area. So we survived on tourism, et cetera. But we've really been just sort of a follower, um, you know, we, and we lead by example. But we, let's become a leader, like I said. You know, I don't care. Keep Santa Cruz weird. <laughs> let's, let's, let's start making it smart. And, um, and I, believe, I really believe that this, uh, you know, I want it, it consists like it's lacking to have people with business talent and experience in the county, and so I want this board to consist entirely of a diverse crowd of business talent and experience, and it also include two supervisors that are concerned about this issue as well in that board. And if I make the runoff, I believe that you know I can have the time to develop some specific resolutions. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I, I think basically, uh, through my experience that I've had, the knowledge of the issues that I have, and the personal contacts that I have in all levels throughout government and with the business community and the community at large, the nonprofit charitable community as well, which is vitally important in our whole economic structure here in Santa Cruz County. Uh, they have expressed uh, confidence in me before. I think that this experience that I have and how to run budgets uh, in, my, in the private sector uh, over uh, as chair of numerous non-charitable activities as well as in the legislature. I, I think that I have proven that I can uh, be reasonable, uh, I can be independent, and I'm open. And I want to listen to the people in the county before we come to a decision. Uh, the, the land use, ad is, is, as we said before, is a critical element of what a county supervisor does. And we have what we we ought to build on what we have, our real assets here, and that's the agricultural community, the tourism community, the education community, where one out of four of our neighbors in this county are involved in education one way or the other. That is critical and high technology. Those are our pluses. Let's build on them and let's get something in the county that can help those business interests know what's available here and make that decision. Do I want to come in here and really be part of this? Sure they do. They love the natural resources we have. And as a matter of fact, I truly believe, and I've shown through the legislation that I've promoted and the editorials that I've written, 
that literally jobs and the environment can work together because they have to in this county with agriculture, education, and, and the uh, high-tech interests and tourism being a, a, a real critical parts of our economy. I, I think that we can make this a, a more job-friendly uh, county, and I will work toward that end uh, when I become county supervisor, and I ask for your vote on June 5th. Thank you. First off, I'd like to thank the, the chamber for having this mixer today, I mean this forum tonight, and giving me the opportunity to speak. I think the business people should vote for me because I'm a strong voice for the business association, for business owners. I own a construction company, a successful construction company, in a time that most construction companies have disappeared. Uh, I'm a huge advocate uh, within the 5th District and the community that I'm going to represent. I sit on a multitude of local nonprofits within the 5th District. I sit on, have sat on the Boulder Creek Parks and Rec and made a huge uh, change to a dysfunctional organization and turn it into, uh, by its peers, voted the best small district in the state. I feel that I can bring that those same qualities uh, to the Board of Supervisors. I've been able to and continue to build partnerships within my own community, and I'm beginning to establish a multitude of connections outside of the 5th District because it's equally important to have an understanding of the entire county and the county's needs so that you can make decisions that are going to affect land use. Uh, you talk about one in five being one in, one in 25, you know, 25 percent of the people out there are, are doing good things. There's also a 25 percent unemployment rate in the San Lorenzo Valley. That's one of the things that I really want to look at. And being a business owner, I feel that I can help with that. I'm helping with that every day. As president of the Business Association, I've been working with the Felton Business Association, the local chamber, with a marketing plan and strategic planning so that we can promote small business in the San Lorenzo Valley. And more importantly, we're taking a look, as, as, as Zach Friend had mentioned earlier, bringing local owners and, and local residents to shop locally because we are a bedroom community and we're making strides to fix that. Thank you. I just want to, uh, you know, has been at uh, the mayor and, um, and also in the city council for eight years has prepared me to, uh, to be your county supervisor. My experience and my and my actions that I have taken in those eight years, and besides being a part of the elected official, being 35 years in public education, by being, you know, uh, and uh, working at a high school, middle school, and elementary school. One of the things that is very important to, to me that for the business community, the business community knows me, and I always have the ability to go to the business community and be able to support them whatever their needs are. We have done a lot of activity and a lot of development for the business in the city of Watsonville, and I would like to continue that at, at the county level. The Act community, so I always have support the Act community because they're a very important uh, uh, business in, in our city of Watsonville, besides you know, providing employment, besides you know, um, they know all over the world, uh, especially the, the berries and the strawberries, that's one of the key elements of, of our economy in, in our city. And I think we have to continue to support that. That's why we developed the recycle plan so we continue to stop the recycling, uh, the recycling plan so we can stop the salt instruction. And, and we'll do more to be able to help that, the ag community. One of the things that you can, the business community can be able to ensure is that I'm a person that's very innovative, creative person that will work with the uh, the public institution, Carrillo College, will, will now they're going to have a group building to provide training and, and, and hopefully jobs when we develop the Manawe Ao Industrial Park. And at the same time, you know, Carrillo College has been part of the business. Adult education will sell the part of the land. Now we have adult education provide some job training, uh, English language, citizenship uh, classes. So we are very key in education along with the business community. So it's very important to, to, to work with my experience that I have with my eight years and also as an educational uh, uh, leader. Thank you. Well, I'd like to thank the chamber, but I'd also like to thank you guys for completing Survivor Chamber Forum edition. I've only <laughs> saw one person pass out, I see you in the back <laughs> during the course of this. I've, 
you know, what we've seen over the last few years have been major cuts to vital services, and the vital services are what really, such as infrastructure, public safety, and even some of the land use threats for agriculture, prime agricultural land, uh, parks and open spaces, that provides the backbone for economic development. And when you vote for somebody, local elections really do matter. I mean, it's not like the state and federal government are succeeding in anything they're doing right now. And so the local government is where these decisions are going to be made. And who you elect for these positions really do matter. I, I believe that I'm a pragmatic and effective and responsive voice and will be for the second district. And the effective component really does matter. Because you only get one vote in this situation. And the person that you choose to represent, you don't want somebody to be somebody that is going to be an outlier, not going to be able to work with other members of the board, not going to be able to work with outside institutions from the water boards, the educational facilities, or you name it. And I think that I bring that broad base of not just support, but also that effective and responsive and responsible component uh, to, to the Board of Supervisors. So thanks for surviving. Thanks for only one person passing out. And I'd be honored to have your support. Thanks, everybody, for showing up tonight. I think business owners should vote for me because I bought the boarded up historic Seabreeze Tavern in 2005 with my, my retirement savings to live and retire here, not to fix it up and sell it, not to run for office and then move on to another political office down the road. I bought it. I'm running for political office because I've seen what I believe to be the worst that our county government has to offer. And with each fire marshal citation and planning department lawsuit, I fought back without an attorney and one in court on my own, mainly because I didn't have the money to pay an attorney, but I still won. But just think what I can do for homeowners and businesses out there that are either trapped in the same processes that, I'm cur that I got out of or about to be trapped. And what I can do if I'm on the inside. If I'm on the inside, I can force change within this county government. I can work with the other board members to highlight some of these problems that they're not aware of until they bubble up. I went to the county supervisor when I first had my problem, and I still got trapped in this revenue trap. And I think it's, it's more of educating our board that this is not the way business is done. I've had businesses over in Santa Clara County. I've run a computer business. I've had an internet company. I never had the red tape that I had here in Santa Cruz County, and all I'm running is a restaurant and bar here. So I think I can do what the local businesses need someone on the inside to do, which is fix this so that it's easy to open a business. We want small businesses in Santa Cruz County that are run by families and not big corporations, but the money they extracted from me is not the kind of money that a small family business starts with. So anyway, I just want to say that if you have uh, time, come by the Seabreeze Tavern in Rio Domar Beach, and uh, we're open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday after 6 o'clock. Let me know how the county's treating you. Thanks. Thanks for your vote. Well, I want to thank everyone for uh, hanging in here tonight. It's been kind of a long evening. Um, I think the reason that small business should support me is because I'm a small business owner. Um, and I think a big part of it comes down to trust. I've lived in this county for almost 50 years. Uh, my father, he moved here with his family in the early 1920s, about 90 years ago. I'm not a Johnny-come-lately. Um, I don't plan to go anywhere. I'm not planning to build a political career on the backs of the people in the 2nd District. I simply want to represent the people in my hometown 2nd District. And that's why I would ask for your vote on June the 5th. Thank you. Charles Paulden. Um, as a fifth generation Californian whose family has been in agriculture and had um, many businesses and, and were on the forefront of many of the things that created California, as a 40 year resident of California, of, of Santa Cruz, who came here to get away from the decay of unplanned growth, I'm not somebody who left a decaying eastern city to come here. I actually went to Hawaii to try to find that natural place that most of us are here for. I did not feel like it was right for me to impose myself and make their place worse. So I came back here to keep this place better. And if everybody who doesn't value Santa Cruz would go back and fix whatever they left, I think we'd all be much better off. I've studied urban planning. I've studied the water cycle. I've studied organic gardening. If we would work together for the good, for local people and local jobs, respecting our environment, doing things in the right place, making a high quality brand. We, you know, we have so much to, we can do here. By going, we've talked about big ag that is creating 
desal, I mean, the, and also saltwater intrusion because they're over drafting. If we would give that, we would do farming. They used to call farming biointensive organic gardening. No, that's what they call it now. My grandparents called it farming. We have, bio, we have the agroecology program up at UCSC. We say we want to use our education. If we're supplementing people to bring low wage jobs, exploiting people, so we have to pay taxes to backfill their health care, their housing, their food, that comes out of the people when our jobs are going down, our taxes are going down, because we don't, we're not making as much money. So we have to look as creative thinkers in a systems analysis. We've got to look at good urban planning. I would suggest a pattern language by Christopher Alexander. Many of these ideas are already out there. It's not outside the box. Let's do it now. Uh, Thank you for the Chamber for inviting me uh, tonight and thank you for everyone here and those watching on TV for taking the time to learn about where we stand on positions. Uh, local government is the most effective form of government and, and what you know really makes a difference. Um, business people should vote for me and a lot of the same reasons that uh, the whole community should vote for me. Um, I have a broad base of experience that has been useful as uh, in my job as county supervisor. I've done everything from con community organizing, uh, your own Bill Teisling hired me to run a startup. Uh, I've uh, run a nonprofit, and uh, I've worked on uh, economic labor and health policy at a state and federal level. Uh, I also served on the Cabrillo College Board for eight years and saw the cycles that went through. And uh, as three years on the County Board of Supervisors, I've been able to do a good job about building effective policy, including people in decision making, and uh, adding to the county's tax base in a way that, uh, that doesn't add any new development, no new traffic, and no new taxes. Uh, I think it's vitally important that we engage our community, whether it be on economic development issues or other urban planning issues, in the decisions that uh, affect them. I have worked hard to bring hundreds of people out on issues around redevelopment, criminal justice, uh, and economic development. I will continue to do that as a member of the Board of Supervisors. I'm proud to have the support of many elected officials from the Board of Supervisors, the Santa Cruz and Capitola City Councils, the members of the school boards uh, throughout the district and the fire board. Um, I'm proud to have the support of the neighborhood association leaders, uh, the business leaders in the first district, uh, as well as a host of organizations uh, like the Sierra Club, the Labor Council, the Democratic Women's Club. Uh, I want to encourage you to find out more about me by visiting my website at friendsofjohnleopold.com and I look forward uh, to your support on June 5th. Please vote for John Leopold. Thank you. Uh, Gary Richard Arnold. In the past, I've managed department stores and drugstore chains. I've brokered three different real estate offices in Southern California and Manhattan Beach and Westwood and West LA. Um, I believe that uh, we just heard that the local government is really important, and in no way is our government local. Uh, it is contracted with ICLEI. It's adopted the United Nations Agenda 21. Uh, that was uh, Sam Farr who wrote that particular uh, forward to that draft. Uh, Zach Friend worked for Sam Farr. Um, in, in addition, <clears throat> every one of us candidates, we swore to uphold the Constitution, and I think this is really important. Uh, no county exists without, uh, every county is an extension of the state. There'd be no state in the union. No state joined the union until they had their Bill of Rights. We have seen within the last four or five months where Americans can be black bagged, where the president says he can assassinate any American any place on earth. They recently passed a, a law called uh, 347, which puts you in jail uh, if you happen to uh, protest the wrong uh, federal official. We have a big problem in this country, and it exists in this county. We're an extension of a, a UN uh, rollout. If you look at the back side of that DVD on the Council on Foreign Relations, you'll find that the, the Council on Foreign Relations formed in 1921, their objective was the North American Union. The harmonizing of local laws here is to exactly do that, and these people are as guilty as sin. This, this uh, 62 pages of absolute bunk that ties down every, every business, is, this thing is absolutely outrageous, and the people should find out what's going wrong in this county and vote for somebody that's not afraid of the political machine. Look up Gary Richard Arnold, the man against the machine.
Circuit Chamber of Commerce and the Santa Cruz uh, Business Council. Thank you to the candidates for participating in our forum. Also a special thank you to the uh, Museum of Art and History, Santa Cruz Community Television, and the committee that helped put together this uh, forum. Thank you again and good evening.